Hello there. Welcome to the third session of Fitness and Health. And the topic that we are going to discuss in this present session is Principles of Physical Training. So before that, about this course Fitness and Health, free online course. Uh, you by this time know how does it work. Today is the third session of this four lecture series course. So you go through the study material that is tailored for this session, attend the lecture on YouTube, you solve the quiz in the given link, you download the certificate for the session, and then once you have taken all four quizzes, you are eligible for the course completion certificate, which is a little larger quiz, and that's all. We, that is how the, the, the course goes on. So first day on 27 June, we had the first uh, five steps to a healthy life. A general overview of how can we remain healthy. Yesterday's session was all about understanding fitness. Today's session is principles of physical training. And tomorrow we'll talk about the journey towards fitness. So all these three sessions are going to build up to a, a major session tomorrow where we are going to discuss about how what we have learned in the first, second and third day can be applied on, on the body as a whole. But today it is a little more academic. We are going to talk about various principles of physical training. And so let me begin. Yes, hello everyone. I see your messages. Thank you, thank you for all your adulations. Now, let us first define training. Training, as it is uh, referred to as a consistent or chronic progression of exercise sessions designed to improve physiological function either for better health or for sports performance. So, this training, that consistent and chronic progression word is important. Otherwise, if suddenly I feel that today I want to exercise and I go on the field and I take 20 rounds around the field and come back, without repeating the same feat uh, over a period of time that is not training so there is a consistency in training also there is a chronic progression of exercise many people will come to uh, healthcare professionals and then they will say that i am trying to be fit i am trying to improve my body weight or uh, something like that and when the healthcare professionals tell them that you have to perform exercise the person in question, they usually say, I do exercise or I do physical activity. I am not lazy. I am not inactive. I, I uh, go for walking or I go for shopping every day as in, as in the grocery shop, shopping which, which should burn a significant amount of calorie. However, unless you have a chronic progression, that, that is not, that is where we reach uh, with that amount of training, what, whatever you had to achieve, you have already achieved. So this progression word is also important, right? So training includes consistency and progression for either better health or both or sports performance or both. Now, there are many principles of physical training. These are the most important eight principles. They are specificity or set principle, principle of overload, principle of rest, recovery and adaptation, principle of Progression, principle of retrogression, play to and reversibility, maintenance, individualization, and warm up and cool down. Let us see all these principles one by one. Specificity. Now, there is no prize for guessing with this person. He is Usain Bolt, the, apparently the fastest person on the earth, and he runs, uh, he runs 100 meters in less than 10 seconds. Now, why I have put his picture on specificity? Because Usain Bolt is, is the master of a specific kind of sport that is running. And in running also, he is a specialist sprinter. I told it yesterday and I will repeat today that if you put Usain Bolt in marathon run, he will 
probably won't be able to complete the marathon because his body is specifically trained and specifically designed for short duration run sprint and that is what is the essence of specificity it means also the other term of specificity is specific adaptation to impose the demands because usain bolt has had had demanded or had imposed a specific kind of demand on his body that is short duration run now because of that short duration run training short distance run training 100 meter 200 meter his body is his body is tuned to that kind of adaptations so the the adaptations out of exercise happens depending upon the kind of exercise you perform so if you want to run faster you have to run you cannot arm wrestle on the other hand if you want to improve your arm wrestling cycling will not help it's like uh, there is a very common saying in our india that if you have uh, sow sow the seed of say jackfruit then you cannot expect mango so if you are looking for muscle bulk then your exercises should be tailored for muscle bulk if you are looking for losing weight your exercises will be tailored to lose weight yes there is certain amount of overlap for example usain bolt used to be a wonderful cricketer from jamaica before becoming a, a sprinter but then he will never be as good a cricketer as good he is a sprinter similarly you probably will lose some amount of weight when you are doing your bulking up muscle exercises but if your aim is to lose weight then probably your exercises has to be tailored for losing weight or whatever is the purpose so when you say specific what are the specifications in simple term it is specific to the t that is if you are doing a specific exercise which needs us a, a, a very specific type of strength your strength will increase say imagine your you are trying to lift weight with your biceps with your biceps at with your with your elbow at 90 degree then your strength will improve maximally when the elbow is in 90 degree if you are exercising for power then power will improve when you are exercising for endurance your endurance will improve so it depends on the specificity principle is applicable to virtually all the variable that is present now the next principle is about overload what does it mean in simple terms it means that you have to exceed whatever you are doing today to have gain tomorrow the same example if you are exercising every day then why are you not gaining because whatever were the gains that you have achieved from those kind of exercises or physical activities that you have already gained beyond that there is nothing more to gain let me give you a different example say i am poor at maths so i start studying maths from first standard now if once i have mastered my first standard math i should go on to overload myself onto second standard math otherwise if the second year also i am st start studying the first standard math and then in successive years first standard first standard first standard first standard then my growth does not happen same thing with exercise when i am able to lift say a 2 kg dumbbell then i should be progressing to a say 2 and 1/2 kg dumbbell otherwise the changes will not happen in my body however from 2 kg dumbbell i should not be progressing to a 20 kg dumbbell unless i am a spider man who can lift the whole bus also with ease so the overload has to be uh, graded now this is about rest recovery and adaptation look at this picture now when you start exercising say when you start exercise start to exercise today 
right after my exercise is over, my session is over, I am going to have a reduction in my ability to perform. And that you can see here in the orange zone. And that reduction to coming back to my ability to perform talks about or, or shows my recovery. And then as the recovery happens, I will have adaptation. That is my ability is going to increase. That is my performance is going to improve. But when the performance is high, the ability to perform is high. When the adaptations has happened, then I should be training once again. Otherwise, it will come down to again to the baseline. Let me give a funny example to this. I was, and this is a joke, but I will tell it in first person. So I was, imagine I, I take my food every day in a canteen where I see my neighbor who also takes food every day uh, is able to eat, polish off two plates of biryani. Where one plate itself is a Herculean task for me. I cannot, I cannot finish it every day. Now one day, I tell this to a friend that you know I have, I have seen a person who can, who can finish off two plates of biryani without any problem. And my friend is also like me, and he says no, it is not finish, it is not possible to finish two plates at a, at one sitting for a normal person. So I kind of make a bet with him, my friend, and the next day I come and I tell this person who is who is eating two plates of biryani that day also that sir, uh, I have I have put a bet with my friend, I have challenged my friend, and he says that nobody can finish two plates of this uh, biryani, and he uh, I'm kind of I'm in a bet and I am going to win one thousand rupees if you can show by eating two plates of biryani. So this person is very friendly. He smiles and he says, no problem, I, I can finish even more. So I said, okay, if you if you are so confident, I'll place the bet and whatever I win, 50% is yours. This person is very happy. So next day, I bring my friend and I see that this person on whom I have, I have, uh, I, I have put my bet, he is already present in the restaurant and he greets us and then we order biryani for all of us and two plate for him. But today on the match day, he is unable to perform. He, he tries to finish up but I, I get to see that he is not in his normal form and he, he with a lot of high effort, he is able to finish only one plate of biryani. And then I lose the bet and goes away saying also call me a liar. This who, who is uh, supposedly supposedly the biryani champion. And I said champ what happened? What happened to your form? He says even I don't understand. Just before you came I practiced twice. So that's what happens when you when you perform. You know right after you perform your ability to perform reduces. Unless you are a super of a commercial healthy film where you can keep on hitting the bad guys without getting tired, you and me, we get tired. So what we need is rest, what we need is time to recover. And during this recovery time, the wonderful thing as called as adaptation happens. This adaptation is also specific to the type soldier, this athlete will also be uh, subjected to that gradual progression and because of that this specific person will be this specific person will be able to lift the bull and his strength is also going to improve and that is the essence of our, your resistance or your strength in your exercise intensity in a gradual way now if you see there are three different progressions. Here the first one is similar to what those Greek, Greek people used. That is uh, step by step by step by step. Every day a little, 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 little improve, improvement. On the other hand, the option B 
is for few days keep on exercising in the same progression same training load and then you increase the exercise intensity or load to through a larger larger progression and then again you wait for some days so that the body you take one more leap in the exercise intensity and the third one is you have a gradual progression and then you actually reduce your exercise intensity or volume and then again gradually you progress and again you come back so it's loading and then slowly at, at one point of time you come down why do you come down this step down is so it leads to adaptation otherwise what happens is you and then you are subjected to something called as overtraining your body at one point of time cannot match the amount of load you are putting and then we can call we, we see what happens to the people who who do too much of increment in the exercise or any other kind of loading without giving enough time to adapt they are having something called as burnout similar to uh, in terms of income if you can still get some more gains and athletes or exercisers say that once you have reached plateau you have to shock the body now what do they mean is you have to add some variations so that the body goes out of its comfort zone out of its understanding that how to do the exercises and however once you have reached, reached the plateau it's a little difficult to break through the barrier also understand that plateau or regression may be a sign of overtraining syndrome or non functional overreaching which means that your performance is actually at the on the verge of coming down so if you have symptoms of getting uh, weakness or or other problems of overtraining then you should uh, look at that as a serious problem and you should you should take steps and this usually happens to professional athletes so if you are just starting out overtraining may not be your problem but if you are in doubt please go into a professional and take consultation coming to maintenance maintenance is the amount of effort which is required to maintain it and it depends on the which means that if you have work for strength it is easier to maintain on the other hand if you have work for easier to slip away for maintaining endurance you need to work harder or to talk in a different way if you are trying to maintain muscle bulk it is easy if you are trying to maintain your cardio it's a little harder in general intensity is the key to maintenance that is if you are especially if you are trying to uh, cut down on the exercise volume and cut down on the frequency and duration if you are just maintaining the exercise uh, intensity your muscle bulks will remain individualization uh, every individual is different and their need from the exercise is also different their their need from the exercise is also different and the how their body responds to similar stimulus is also different uh, individualization the inter individual variability depends on a lot of stuff the inter individual variability depends on factors such as age uh, gender the genetic constitution if there is any any disease what kind of what kind of training modality the person is using lifestyle factors especially the nutritional and sleep habits stress levels and substance use and that's why i have put this picture of two childhood friends vinod kamli and sachin tendulkar if you see apart if you see they had a lot of similarities they used to study in the same school they they were of the same age they were uh, from the same same team for longest amount of time however the training and overall physical activity for 
overall ability and achievements are drastically different and why is that so there it's like a lot of thing has been written but as you can see the differences can be attributed to genetics the difference can be also attributed to the lifestyle factors so individual factors have a lot of role to play in terms of in terms of uh, gains from exercise as for example as you, if you can make out again this is this are two players from the from our era 90s era steve wo and mark wo both of them were actually twins non identical but they were twins and both were fantastic players of the game cricket but then their styles were different and the amount of time they have played age is also different so even for twins the gains and their results of similar kind of training are drastically different having said that the genetic has a large role to play and you will understand that prepares the body for giving the body signal redistributing the circulation and etc for blood is uh, blood travels from uh, potent or non essential all this are done during warm up it allows for uh, return so both warm up and cool down is extremely important and last part of it periodization or variation what is periodization when you are training going to train for a for a marathon i cannot run 40 km. so i need to have a systematic process is known as periodization so through training period i will divide my training period into into various zones say you can call it as initial zone middle zone and then performance zone where say if i if i want to learn uh, run run marathon for one year uh, after one year then i will plan my my training accordingly every day for next one year i will not do the same training because initially my abilities will be less and also initially my goals will be to remain to say adhere to my exercise and and build my body in such a way that i prevent injury of training and then once i have achieved that goal i'll have to go to the next goal so there are small 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 incremental goal and based upon that i should go into some incremental training program and that is the periodization so for sport specific training uh, the the periodization is varied over a macro cycle a large chunk of time which again div, uh, divided in are uh, divided into a meso cycle so smaller cycle and then meso cycles are again divided into micro cycle which usually uh, which can be a week so that's how you should divide your exercise plan also from from and you should every every uh, session training session you should have a goal or you should have a target which is realistic achievable and a little bit challenging once you have achieved that target then you move on to the next target and that is how your every day sessions are made and then if you have uh, one one week planned like that then week per week you should have target and then that is how you should decide or you should plan your microcycle mesocycle and macrocycle so these were the books from which i had imbibed while making this presentation that's all i wanted to discuss in this session let me see if there is any discussion yeah, i had a bit of network issue uh,
Hello. Uh, how far were we? Where were we? Uh, which part was not audible? Can you please tell me? Shall I repeat that specific area? Thank you, Samruddhi. Uh, were you able to take the last part of the session, like the concluding part? Hi. The concluding part, the last few parts of. Thank you.